Welcome back to Howard Wake's Code Green, and this today is the Easter 2017 edition. And Easter, it's actually Easter Monday, which me from Europe coming, it's a federal holiday, but here in the United States that got value engineered, so we're here in studio today and working hard. And value engineering is probably a good way to segue into the show, and I want to welcome here our guest, um, uh, Mike Hedge. Thank you, Martin. Who is a CMCEA at Hawaii Building Maintenance. So welcome and being with us here. Glad to be here. And so uh, H Howard is, uh, I'm not Howard, I'm Martin. I'm Howard's deputy. And uh, Howard is on his ongoing uh, bioclimatic building crusade and on the East Coast and fighting that buildings are basically going to be in uh, compliance with our natural environment and it's gonna, everything's going to be off the grid eventually. Yes. But until then, we have a while to go. And Howard, uh, being my great sort of mentor and, and hero, he has a great way to relate to the shows by own personal little experiences to make the audience also come up with memories they have. So if we can have the first picture here, this is me many years ago. Talking Easter, this was my blackest Friday ever because it's just completing this building here. And then I had the local authorities in Germany basically do a crash test of my just uh, basically completed guardrails. And you had a great term for that. How do you call that here? Deferred maintenance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that thing they were throwing against my, my guardrails uh, test. Um, you, before the show, you had a great term about that. So they brought, because I was trying to interpret code in details, they brought a big swing with a rubber tire. And they started smashing into your they, brand newly installed guardrail. They did. They I did. find that hard to believe. But and and that, was a, that was a new building. And they were allowed to because... Because of code being so strict, you know, in Germany, and I was playing around, I guess, with that. We could use some of that here. I guess. And so the next picture talking here, the most prominent example, tragically prominent example of that one is, is from here. That is what we're actually going to talk about. Uh, we talk about the first half of the show we're going to dedicate to that, and that show title, which Howard always has the most catchiest, crazy terms. This is help me, uh, I'm spalling. Catch here. me, I'm spalling. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what how, when Howard contacted me and he mentioned the program, you know, Code Green's mission is not just the energy efficiency side of a building, but the tenant's comfort, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether it's indoor air quality or safety. Yeah, yeah. So when this happened, um, you know, I was, of course, uh, honored and humbled to come on board, but mm -hmm. it is just that. It is, um, it's, it's a case where things might have been prevented mm -hmm. had, had they been maintained properly. Mm -hmm. And that was number two, just explain. Most people know this here from the media. Number two, where is that? Here, this this case, if you can, this picture here, where is that? That, that was the Alamoana Center, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. unfortunate incident. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, prayers out to the young man and, and the, the person injured. But um, pretty soon, the reason being is that legislation is in, proposed legislation is mm -hmm. in, in the Honolulu government right now to make commercial buildings mm -hmm. um, have a requirement that all their railings get inspected every year. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing this to light here, um, not just spalling, could be spalling, rusting, a combination of things, and we'll talk a little bit more about deferred maintenance, but we just wanted to um, point this out, Howard wanted to point this out mm -hmm. for safety, mm -hmm. and let's just say that, I mean, what we're talking about is spalling, rusted railings, these are the type of things that definitely would you know you would think that because of the safety nature of it would you would have inspections and some oversight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if you do if you have a property and you have this type of stuff then you need to not just take action but you need to call professionals if you're dealing with mm -hmm. um, spalling you mm -hmm. can't have your in-house engineering guys you know try and fix that you mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. need to turn to the pros mm -hmm. and the next picture sort of explains a little bit where uh, how it looks like. So this term, uh, you know, spalling comes from when there isn't enough concrete over the rebars, which haven't been stainless because it's too costly. Today we have fiber reinforced concrete, which just doesn't happen anymore. But this is the stuff built in the, you know, 60s and the 70s increasingly and heavily. 
So when you start to see the rebars, that's something where, you know, this should catch your attention. Hopefully right? you can catch it before then. In, in a lot of cases with spalling, what happens first is maybe a, a crack in the cement. Mm -hmm. And typically a crack in the cement means nothing. But when you see rust color coming out of that crack, mm -hmm. you know something's underneath it. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. can catch spalling at that point, and just mm -hmm. like a cavity, you chip away all the bad tooth, mm -hmm. and you get in there and you bond it up, mm -hmm. that should be the end of your story. Mm -hmm. If you try and do it haphazardly or how do you say, you know, not professionally, yeah, chances yeah. are it's going to come back. And the next picture uh, illustrates that further. And you make these great analogies to actually other parts in life. We talked before the show, you know, let's say a car. You have a car, you buy a new car. There's warranty, but only if you drive this car through the car wash frequently. Only if you do the service intervals, right? Because otherwise the car manufacturer says, you're on your own, right? right. Good luck with that. Yeah, don't come see me so if you in, haven't changed your In other your areas, it's always like we know this, right? And we talked about even clothes, you know, when a, when a, when a button falls off, you got to sew it back on, right? Right. Yeah, life cycle costs. You're not just going to throw that shirt away. And so something like the, the last picture, number four, with the rusted railing. Spalling is a different story, but, you know, seemingly rust. The concrete looks intact. So what that is, that's just lack of proper maintenance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so I'll, I'll use the extreme, a cruise ship. I was mm -hmm. lucky to be on a cruise ship. And you see all the guys painting every day. They're yeah, painting yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We're in the tropics. This type of rust is going to appear. Mm -hmm. So to let that go and let that go, um, that that's something that is going to be mm -hmm, a, a, mm -hmm. a source of contention for, mm -hmm, forever. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about, because I'm from Germany, as everything is tougher in Germany, right? Another analogy I'm using is, is cars, as we do, yeah. And in Germany, the safety inspections are so tough. It's actually, there are some cars here that have more rust than body left, right? In Germany, is if you have the tiniest little spot, they're going to take a screwdriver and punch through it and they're going to ask you to get it welded so there's no rusty cars on the road, right? This is extreme, basically, uh, mandating, right? Yes. Uh, from, a, from a society's point of view. We're not, we're not here yet, but you said, you know, there's things on the way because of this tragic happening in Ala Moana that it might be. So we might want to be prepared for that. And same with a car. If you have that little thing that shows you should take action immediately because it only grows, right? It does. You know, that, that's a great way um, uh, of getting rid of deferred maintenance, especially in Germany when you guys are allowed to go 100 miles plus. Mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm. want the next car next to you to be some rum rumbling bucket of rust who mm -hmm. just has been able to avoid any inspection and fall, the wheels fall off running yeah, next yeah. to you. You know, you, Then the Autobahn is no fun but hell, right? So uh, the it, road to hell. So they recognize um, <laughs> deferred maintenance. And that's absolutely true. And let's get the next picture and talk about another material, uh, which is wood, right? And wood is even here in the tropics, some call it termite food, right? Ever since it got brought because it's not native to here. And you also have some great bullet points here to make the audience hyper aware. Of Completely things. applicable. I mean, um, in, in commercial buildings, most are is going to be concrete and steel and glass, but there's going to be multifamily, family homes. Um, things like that where there is wood and so you know you can't take anything for granted really an inspection even whether it's mandated by the government or not this is these are the type of practices that you have to um, enact in your building to take a proactive stance against safety we'll get into the proactive stance again efficiency shortly but really the, the the target focus the beginning of this is to let you know you know that it's a problem because mm -hmm. we just saw an unfortunate accident. It doesn't have to get to that. You know legislation's under the way. It may come and make a requirement. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for that even. Mm -hmm. You know, start it now. You're watching this program. You own a building. You're a chief engineer or something, facilities mm -hmm. manager. You know what? S on your next opening, spend an hour, two hours. If it's eight hours, spend it. Go look at everything. Mm -hmm. Be proactive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another analogy, maybe even closer for some in the audience, and this is... Uh, ourselves as human beings, right? Because nature, by the way, is like whatever nature produces um, is so clever because it doesn't need any of that, right? It comes out of nothing, only needs photosynthesis, a plant, right? And then it's basically biodegrading. But everything we human beings make is not as smart, let's just face it. 
and it basically degrades. And even we as being organic, but if we reach a certain age, I'm speaking about myself, your regular checkups are recommended, right? Mm -hmm. And the doctor is going to go through these things, right? And they're going to check if there's some incidents here and there. And if there are, let's just say diabetes indication, you know, you can take some actions. You can change your diet and things, right? That's a great example because uh, before we get into the next slide, you, you're almost talking about internal sensors, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to wait until your tooth starts to ache or you have a pain in your side till you go. Mm -hmm, you go, mm -hmm. you get your regular checkups, mm -hmm. you can kind of, you know, there's a certain amount of predictability in what's going to mm -hmm, happen to mm -hmm. you. So same thing with high tech equipment, you're going to have sensors that kind of give you some predictability, but, um, but there are others that don't, there's and, no sensors. And, and, and that's a great segue into the next picture actually, where you can make this illustrated even more provocatively, right? Yeah. So preventive maintenance, just like Germany doesn't allow cars to get to that mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The FAA doesn't allow, um, does, does not take an airline's word that they're doing everything in that maintenance hangar. Mm -hmm. Every maintenance hangar is different, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, not, not slamming anyone because I don't know, you know, the, the names of bads or, or good. But when you're talking about people's lives at, at 30,000 feet, what I've recently learned was that, of course, airplanes have the same, have sensors that automobiles have. But what they also have, and every air, airline over, flying over 30,000 feet has to have it, there's 3,500 sensors that communicate between the plant, plane and the ground. Wow. So, and the points, there's never a place where the points, the plane is out of contact with the earth on all these things. Mm -hmm. So the moment something happens to their engine, the first little sign of trouble, a plan is made to get them down in the safest mm -hmm. spot. That's the extreme side wow. Wow. of not having deferred maintenance. Yeah. And that's a great example. I mean, first of all, there is sort of societal control, you know, there's laws, there's regulations about that, which we don't have in buildings yet. Mm -hmm. But then there's also at the end, the consumer, right? So if you read like there's a $25, I read that flights within reach from Boston to uh, DC or something like that. And there were some cases in, in Europe where these cheap airlines, you know, uh, critical investigators found out that the airlines are only able to provide that but saving on uh, maintenance which they found some loopholes right so is that a good investment to gamble with your life no right? i would say i would say that's unsustainable and it would be extremely unfortunate to learn the hard way in a case like that yeah. you're dealing with an air conditioner in a house or an automobile is, is way different when, you know, taking someone in the air and, yeah, and yeah. Have, having yeah. their lives in your hands. So you can get killed by coming down with an airplane, right, in an uncontrolled way because of deferred maintenance. And you can always get killed like this tragic person at Alamoana with a failing guard rest. So not much different, right, in that case. And so we're going to have, we're going to say, well, if this isn't still not enough for some people to say, oh, you're just talking about, you know, airplanes and stuff like that, that's sort of like still pretty far away from me. I don't fly. Let's just say, you know, I don't do that. But the next picture is like, maybe you have a kid. So talk about a little bit about that picture, why you brought that in. One of the reasons I chose that picture is if I had a relative at my house and I had a stair railing and below that railing was eight feet before the floor, and I saw a young child going up to press that, I would have wished I already pressed each one, even if it was a brand new home, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. It, I mean, railing inspection at its core is mm -hmm. starts mm -hmm. with this and mm -hmm. then goes into the general public. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether, I mean, this is maybe a departure from the commercial building side that, you know, Howard and we want to reach, but it touches, you know, it touches everyone. And this is the type of, yeah. and this yeah. is what it comes down to. I mean, really it's personal safety. Nothing's yeah. more valuable than a life, yeah. you know? Yeah. So there's too many, too many any um, reasons not to keep up mm -hmm. on maintenance. So, so once again, there is, and at some point you wanted to say, you know, we're we're both not the engineers who uh, whose core business this is to deal with these things. Correct. Right? But I'm a designer. I design these things, and and you're a maintenance uh, expert in that. So mm -hmm. we're we're involved together with the engineers, right? And advise them, consult them. And so we're, we're like a team, right? Right. My job is on the AC side, AC mm -hmm. and energy mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Certainly it's not spalling yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. railing um, safety, but it's it's the same thing. It, it's a building, it's part of your building, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's something that has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the more unfortunate accidents there are, the, the more likely there is to be something imposed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And why wait for that? Yeah, yeah. You know, seeing what can happen. Why wouldn't you just take that into your exactly. own hands and do it? 
And that being said, we take a little promotional break for our colleagues to promote some of their shows to then actually get into the most juicy stuff, which you just already announced, which is your core expertise and experience. So see you back in a minute with, with Mike and the danger of deferred maintenance. Okay, so I'm Crystal. If you haven't tuned into Quark Talk before, you better do it because you're missing out on all the information. We talk about sex, we talk about religion, we talk about everything and nothing. So we've got two gentlemen here going to validate that, right? Greg Kinkley and Roy Chu. What's your take on the importance of talking about these issues? It's very important. It's through, I think, expressing ideas and exchanging ideas that we come to a better understanding of the world and each other. And without that, we live in ignorance and fear. Yep. And Fear is based on ignorance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Great. Amen. I, what more <laughs> could I say than that? That's Something in Yiddish. I think. Cheers, on a Yid. Oi, vai. Come, listen to Quack Talk Tuesday mornings. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, the host of the Cyber Underground on Think Tech Hawaii. This is my co host, Andrew Lanning, Aloha, the security everybody. guy. <laughs> uh, every week at 5 p.m., we'll be discussing cybersecurity, the things to look out for, and the things to do to keep yourself safe. Check us out on Think Tech Hawaii, 5 o'clock Fridays. Thank you. We're back here on Howard Wick's show. Me, the Deputy Martin, here today with Mike Hedge, uh, who is with Hawaiian Building Management. Maintenance. And, uh, maintenance. Thank Sorry. you very much. Okay. And you manage maintenance. Yeah, yes. So it's so and energy. Almost good. <laughs> And so we, 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 before the, the little break, we talked about the, hum, the human factor and we talked about potential threats to well-being. So you're, we get to the next picture and once again, I, I kick off with how I can relate to this. This traces back to my youth in Germany as already an Americano. I wanted to have a pair of cowboy boots and my parents said, well, get yourself a job to get them. And I did. And I worked in a cleaning company and we cleaned ducts of uh, AC in an uh, insurance building. And they were big enough for me to basically go in there. And uh, what I saw is what's on the left on this picture and has grossed me out and left a lasting impact and probably made me a fan of natural ventilation ever since. And yeah, so please explain, you know, a little bit for in your terms and from your field, um, your thoughts around this picture. Well, like. thanks to get into the code greed side of energy and, and use this um, program about deferred maintenance to kind of go into this. Uh, this is just another um, visual impacting photo that um, is typical in so many duct systems that I've looked in. That you Even in Germany, you mm -hmm, find mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. okay, we're humans. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. Your air filter does not catch all the dust, mm -hmm. okay? And this picture is not a black, slimy ductwork where you think there's a big mold issue. Probably it's just dust. But the impacts on indoor air quality, okay, mm -hmm. with this type of dust in the systems, there's, you have relatives, and so do I, that are more sensitive than others. Mm -hmm. They sneeze at every little thing, mm -hmm. their eyes water, mm -hmm. and they get headaches mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a prime example of what can happen. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have a plan. If you don't have a plan to, to, to maintain that, this mm -hmm. is what's going to happen in the end. So what happens if you don't do it every year mm -hmm. or every couple years like you're recommended to? Mm -hmm. It gets to a point where it's built up, yeah. and it's a chronic issue. Yeah. And already maybe tenants are affected, and they've already looked to move into mm -hmm. other buildings and mm -hmm. get new leases and mm -hmm. get out of your building. Mm -hmm. So don't put something like that off. Yeah, and you used a great term from in sort of the intersection of our disciplines, which is sick building syndrome, right? Right. So this is a doctors have sort of found scientific proof of evidence, right, and of that that exists, right? And the number one cause of sick building syndrome? Mm -hmm. Deferred mm -hmm. maintenance. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? It's not the AC systems that were put in brand new, because yeah. when they were brand new, they were working fine. Yeah, and whereas I was way back able to get in because the ducts were so big, in commercial residential, they're small. So you can maybe train your raccoon or something like that to be a brush <laughs> yeah. and, and walk through. <laughs> I'd like to see that. But like you see ha that. don't haven't found these employees yet, right? You're looking for them. No, no, no. Okay. There's machinery nowadays, you know, and depending on the type of duct that you have will depend on the machines they can use. Some ductwork yeah. has lining yeah. that you have to be real sensitive with. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one is, was mm -hmm. a metal ductwork, mm -hmm. so you can kind of mm -hmm. go in there with scrubbers. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and another analogy that we had before is cars, you know. Changing your air filter regularly, you know, is affecting your fuel efficiency, how, you know, smooth your car runs and, and all these things. 
And so we know this. And, and, but it's a good example because also it's like, oh, do I really have to change the air filter again? Didn't I just do that? Maybe not. Yeah. But it's only a couple of bucks. They're going to pay off soon, right? And, and that's the reason that I kind of transitioned into deferred maintenance and not just into energy efficiency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because really, when you look at a commercial building or something, or, or, what's, what's worse? Mm -hmm. Not engaging in energy efficiency or having deferred maintenance. Yeah, yeah. To me, they're both right there. Yeah, they're related. Right? But the thing is, unlike, um, let's say, a leak on a pipe or unlike a crack in your asphalt mm -hmm. parking lot, when you let air conditioning systems go beyond the amount of years that they were supposed to be mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. you not only have older compressors, older units using more electricity, they're older, they suffer more breakdowns, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. breakdowns means more tenant discomfort. Mm -hmm. Old equipment is poor for appraisal value. You have old equipments on your roof or in your basement, mm -hmm. they become bargaining chips mm -hmm, on the day of mm -hmm, the sale. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no benefit yeah, to, yeah. to deferred maintenance. It's yeah. all bad. Yeah. And of the many grades, because gross pictures you provided me, you know, I think there were over 50s, I had the choice to pick the best off and the next picture, I choose here, uh, some of my students, you know, and colleagues get excited about green walls. These walls <laughs> yeah, This where, is not the same one. Yeah, yeah. this is a sort of an uncontrolled green wall because this, once again, this is mold, right? This is gross stuff. And, and what's horrible is this, I mean, I, I can only imagine that this is a place in the middle of nowhere where there's no humans. Mm -hmm. Because for this, for people to walk by this on a daily basis or a weekly or monthly basis, how, how can they let yeah. this happen, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're thinking, oh, it's outside, it's just algae growth. Mm -hmm. But just like you said, that that's impeding the flow into the machine. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then with, that's a cooling tower in the background. Mm -hmm. So cooling towers, there's things in the water like Legionella and other yeah. bad oh, yeah, stuff yeah. that uh -huh. if you don't treat it and you don't maintain it, you're going to have problems. Yeah. This is a red flag. Yeah, yeah. If you're a facilities manager or mm -hmm. a asset manager or a property manager and you're walking your property and mm -hmm. you see something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. why is it like that? Yeah, yeah. And don't accept the answer, well, that's how it's always yeah, been, yeah, you know? Yeah. And whereas the last two pictures, you know, it's like we're hardly ever in our ducts, we're hardly ever on the roofs, but right. the next picture shows us what we all see. You know, we have the single unit, unfortunately, you know, things attached to our facades, which is bad enough from an architectural point of view. But then when they start to show signs like that, that's just the warning side. Okay, it shows from the outside that it's time to let go, replace. That's right. Know. So that airliner, that jet airliner that we saw mm -hmm. earlier, or that mm -hmm. aircraft carrier that's in our background, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those per people like Hawaiian Airlines or the government, when they make decisions to buy an asset that big, mm -hmm. it's not lowest bid mm -hmm. wins the cost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's life cycle costs. Mm -hmm. What is my total cost of ownership yeah. over the life of that ship or that mm -hmm. airliner. Mm -hmm. So with this last unit that you see, number eight, up, up in, I'm sorry, number 10, up in the corner, mm -hmm. when you leave systems in place longer than they are supposed to mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. you're going to spend way more money. Your life cycle costs are going to increase dramatically. Mm -hmm. If you can plan for a system that's supposed to last 10 years and you leave it in for 10, mm -hmm. that's the best case mm -hmm. scenario. Because mm -hmm. what happens? You let it go to 15, well, guess what? In year 11, you lose a condenser mm -hmm. fan motor. Mm -hmm. Year 12, you lose a compressor. Year 13, you lose a control board. And each time the units broke down, the tenants screaming, mm -hmm. and it's just yeah, yeah. all because you didn't plan. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And whereas, you know, the audience might still say the last three pictures, we try to get the audience by basically the human factor and saying it's about the health. But if, if people say, well, I don't really care, then maybe we jump to the, to the next two pictures. And I always call architecture in best case to be planet and people friendly. So when you say, I don't care for people, then maybe some people care. Increasingly, we know society luckily is for the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's the mission that Howard, you know, is, is on internationally. So talk it, about this chart here. A it bit. is. It, it, it is. And it's about education. It's mm -hmm. about bringing things to light. Just like you said, you may have a shrewd business owner and I don't care. My tenants are paying electric mm -hmm. bills. I'm not going to engage mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. But that same owner has grandchildren mm -hmm. and great grandchildren, mm -hmm. okay? And is seeing the, where pollution's going, how smoggy things are. Yeah. Are they really gonna take, just go down that path? Mm -hmm. So this one you have right here, it's basically, it shows higher efficiency equipment towards the end and the, the pounds of CO2 emitted during its life. So you have the worst energy efficiency rating of around 10 nowadays, still in place. Mm -hmm. And you can go to 23 or 28 or in the 30s. And you've over the life of those equipments, you've only, added 50,000 instead of 200,000. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. When one person takes that step mm -hmm. and everyone takes it, I mean, mm -hmm. it's... 
No, great point. And maybe this is a little too academic. Uh, let's take the next picture, which is, I think, a little bit more directly into people's face here, number 12. You know, again, just the same what you said, just illustrate it uh, a little differently. Right? And, uh, so with the impact of AC, so mm -hmm. you have plug load, we have cameras, we have lights here and everything mm -hmm. else, right? That's mm -hmm. great. But 50% or more in any building is yeah. Yeah. R related to air conditioning costs. Mm -hmm. So when you have something like air conditioning in place, the amount of money that you're spending in a building, if you have a large building and a large chiller, it's going to kill you in the end. Mm -hmm. So I gave you one example a while ago. It was if you have two buildings built the mm -hmm. same day mm -hmm. with the same architect mm -hmm. on the same, on, across the street from each other. Yeah. And over the years, one building engages in energy efficiency and the other one doesn't. The building that engages in energy efficiency is going to win in the mm -hmm. end. They're going to mm -hmm. have improved systems, improved infrastructure. Mm -hmm. They're going to be hedged against oil spikes and they're going to have a higher tenant um, they're going to have a lower vacancy yeah, rate. Yeah, Why? Yeah. Because electricity that they don't spend because they've engaged mm -hmm. comes off the bottom comes off the bottom line. Whereas the Energy Hog building, mm -hmm. the rent is the same for both of those mm -hmm. buildings, but mm -hmm. the CAM cost, the common area maintenance cost for the energy efficiency yeah, building, yeah, yeah. are higher, and it puts them out of competition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you made two great cases. You said care for the people, care for the planet. Yes. But what if none of these arguments really fly? And so we live in a highly capitalized society in Western civilizations, which includes Germany and the United States of America. So you already touched on it. Just also make it a little bit more graphical. Uh, there's, a, there's a third reason. So if you don't care for your people, you don't care for the planet, you might care for your wallet in right. the society we right. live. So we have a sibling chart to the one we had for the climate, which is now here for the cost. And you would think this would resonate with most people, but mm -hmm. sadly it doesn't, mm -hmm. right? The mantra mm -hmm. out there I experience every day is low bid wins, mm -hmm. lowest first cost. Mm -hmm. You know what? When it comes to energy efficiency, lowest first cost never wins. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about you know, not caring for anything else. If you are a businessman mm -hmm. and you're deferring maintenance and you're putting off changing that air conditioner or that chiller plant, mm -hmm. I would reconsider that right now and spring it into action because not only are you increasing your appraisal value, right, in tenant comfort and everything else, typically, if you're a commercial building, mm -hmm. the, the decrease in utility expenses go right to your bottom line. So a million dollar a uh, chiller project, oh, well, how long does it take me to pay that back? Mm -hmm. Could be five or seven years. Don't use a simple payback. That's a wrong metric. Mm -hmm. the, the initial investment, even if it only saves you 150 grand a year, mm -hmm. that investment is, is already worth more than what you paid for it. In other words, the appraisal income appraisal value method of a building is mm -hmm. the net operating income divided by the local capitalization rate. Mm -hmm. So if you have 150 grand in savings in a building, and right now here in Hawaii, the local cap rate, I think is around 7%, mm -hmm. that's $2 million mm -hmm. increase in your asset. Great. There's no. too many reasons not to do it. No, thank you so much. We're getting to the end of the show, and number 14, which is our permanent background, is the other example from that, but we don't have, you already explained it. So we're phasing out with the last picture, number 15, which is me thanking you, uh, Mike, for having inspired me and encouraged me uh, to continue to do with the emerging um, generation and colleagues of architecture. This is a building we're currently designing, which tries to be a net zero off the grid, which has an innovative solution to the guardrails. And so we're going to do a show. You inspired me to do a show on my own show, Human Humane Architecture, about that. That's great. Thank you for, for this sort of backup from a profession that we usually don't, don't talk to. And, and let's work together. Thanks for having been on the show. Much Thank you. appreciated. I'm glad to be up here because it really is about raising awareness. Okay, mm -hmm. It's about education. Thank right? you very much. So many things have been going on, and let's bring everyone up Thank to the you. same level. So thank you again. Thanks, and Martin. See you guys all back uh, uh, for Howard. He's going to be back in, in two weeks from his bioclimatic crusade. So in two weeks on Monday, uh, code green again. See you then.